Some people feel that they don't have uh, an issue with homelessness in communities our size, but um, it is an issue. It's a growing issue in our state. It's a growing issue in our nation. There were people here who said we don't have homeless people in Grand Rapids. Um, I don't see any. I drive around all the time. And, and what I think what they were looking for was people pushing shopping carts that were dirty and scraggly. And that isn't who stays at Grace House. That isn't what homelessness is all about. It's people who had an illness, people who lost, lost a job, people who because of um, mental illness or challenges can't uh, afford a place to be all the time. Um, so they're people that you wouldn't recognize um, going to Walmart and, you know, pick them out. Uh, you, you couldn't do that. And so homelessness in that sense is kind of hidden. It opens up your awareness of the homeless uh, needs and the homeless population uh, a lot more. And uh, the, the, uh, what I've seen and what I've known for a few years uh, is that we, there is a, a big need and there's a lot of reasons for that from uh, domestic abuse or uh, substance abuse that the people have to get out of the situation they're in. Uh, maybe they have a good family structure but it's not a, a family structure that they can be in any longer uh, because of, of some abuse type of thing or, or they just get kicked out of wherever they might be. Homelessness is a worldwide issue. Um, I think for many years we hid the issue in our communities. Um, when I grew up in Wisconsin, I lived uh, somewhat near a railroad tracks and we would see hobos coming through the community and that was our only connection in small communities with homelessness. And then as we got older and went off to college and university and so on, we saw folks that were on the street and so on, and it became more and more uh, recognized as an issue. In our community, some of those issues are the, the lack of enough affordable housing for folks. Um, there's issues with uh, uh, dependency on alcohol and drugs, family dysfunction, persons who are dealing with mental illness. Um, and what I always say is the difference between um, a lot of us not experiencing homelessness and those who do is that we have support systems in place. So that if something goes wrong, if we lose a job and then as a result of that we lose our home, um, we have uh, resources, a family to take us in, friends who put us up for a while, um, so that we don't, um, that we aren't on the street. But for a lot of folks, they don't have those support systems, and so they wind up, they come to Grace House. It's, it's an issue that's grown in our communities. Veterans homelessness has become a big issue um, as a nation and as a state. It's, um, it's become an issue where we have made a big difference because there's been a focus on it. Uh, government has focused on it. We've provided some resources. Many nonprofits have started working and focusing on homeless uh, veterans and helping that issue. So that's helping. All of us could be homeless at some point. We had an art exhibit or photography exhibit about homelessness at McRosty Arts Center in the last year. And I had three folks from the community who came up to me quietly and said, Barb, I don't know if you know this or not, but I used to be homeless. You know, after my divorce, I lived in my car for six months. One other person said, I slept in the library at the university for many, many months because I was in an abusive relationship and I didn't have any place to stay didn't have any money to do a down payment on a house, you know, or housing or whatever. Uh, and other people told me those stories. And these were folks who had, um, uh, they were directors of organizations and they had, they had their life back in gear and, and had good jobs and are, you know, folks that we say, wow, they're really doing a wonderful job. But in their past, they've experienced homelessness. When I was still serving here, um, there was no homeless shelter. And we would consistently, I would consistently come to work, find people sleeping like in their vans in our parking lot. Or at times when it was warm enough, leaned against the building, outside our building. And 
you know, what could you do? The nearest homeless shelter was in Virginia or Duluth. And if people didn't have a place to stay, they didn't have gas money to get there. And so I thought, we've got to do something. I mean, this just is not okay. I looked at opening our building, but it would have cost us, as I looked at insurance and what would they require, $60,000 a year, which we didn't have. Um, so then we just got a group of people together, and there was a, a large group of people of the community that just talked, it seems to me, for years. Um, it was over one year, but I'm not sure how long, but what can we do and how can we do it? And um, <clears throat> a lot of good people, a lot of good ideas. And our first thought was um, to go from church to church, be at this church for a month, move on to that church for a month, do one of those kinds of things. Um, and, and we got to that point and kind of got stuck a little bit. And Zion had just added on to its building, had a lot of space. We were one of the larger space-wise buildings in the community. And so I talked to my council about, could we open our doors and let Grace House get a start here? I mean, maybe this will be what they need. Um, and so my council agreed that for the first six to 12 months, Grace House can be at Zion. If you go to some of the large cities in our state and across the nation, you see what we call homeless shelters. And what they are is maybe a big gym or a big room. And at nighttime, you know, nine o'clock at night, they, um, and, I, and I don't say this disparagingly, this is, this is better than being on the street, a thousand percent. They put some mats down on the floor and people are welcome to stay the night. Uh, when they use up the mats, then those folks are still back on the street, you know. But then at 7.30 in the morning, they're, they, they say goodbye to them and they're out on the street and there's no meals, there's no support systems, etc., or very little of that. So it's a place to just sleep. Where at Grace House, we tend to think of this as a home for people, a home for 30 days at a time. And the, the importance of a place like Grace House is not only just providing the bed, uh, a safe, comfortable bed with homemade quilts. Um, you know, we don't pamper guests at all, but we try to make it a, a, a comfortable family setting for people, especially with children. Uh, some people who have lived all their lives on the street, this is their first opportunity to have a home. We provide three hot meals a day that are, are, are cooked by our uh, volunteers and staff. Uh, guests also help with the cleanup of the building, so like part of a family, they scrub the floors, they help with dishes, they do all those good things as family members do. Um, and then we work with them on a daily basis. They have plans, what we call a recovery plan or whatever. Um, we've had different names for it through the years. But what it is is a plan for them to be uh, engaged with people who can, may help them with finding a job may help them secure uh, safe housing in the community, whether that's an apartment or a supportive housing unit or whatever that's appropriate. Um, and then we provide case managers and so on come into Grace House. We have wonderful people. Um, I'll just say Audrey Moan is, is an angel who comes in and others uh, in her agency and other agencies that come in and work with our clients and are connected with them to help them um, uh, connect with the resources in the community, whether it's mental health care or um, just general counseling or uh, get them into um, AA or NA groups if that's appropriate. And we have pretty strict standards at Grace House because we are a family facility and we have young children and so on so we you can't you can't come directly from a facility um, and and come here immediately or whatever um, etc so you have to be working on your life before you're you're qualified because we're concerned that everyone is uh, feel safe here both staff and our guests and and at the very beginning it was like um, from 4 p.m. until 7 a.m and then they would have to go someplace during the day. Um, so that's how we got our start, was using Zion. It shortly became, no, we needed 24 hours because there were families with little kids that were in there as well. Um, and so uh, Grace House became identified a lot with Zion because that was where they were actually for about five years before they moved here. Um, and so after we got them in the building, 
Um, that group that had been meeting kind of dispersed. Um, we got a board together and a director and started going from there and then looking at, okay, so what do we do to get something more permanent? Um, but the very beginnings were um, a big group of people concerned about how do we deal with homelessness. When we first opened Gray's House, we had a lot of single gentlemen that came here, and now we see a lot more families, uh, people with young children, babies. Um, I think our youngest one is sort of, you know, maybe a, a week old, and our oldest folks uh, are in their 80s and 90s, so it, it, it's the wide spectrum of our community. Um, homelessness um, is an issue that impacts all of us. It, um, as a community, um, any of us could become homeless. Um, we could have one accident, one illness, one situation that would change our lives completely and turn us into a situation where we didn't have the support and a home and, and so on. We uh, moved into this facility back in uh, tw late 2011 and uh, basically January of 2012. Uh, we had been housed at the Zion Lutheran Church for many years uh, prior to that and in fact since Grace House started and it was apparent that we weren't going to be able to stay in the church forever. It wasn't uh, the best fit. Uh, Zion treated us very, very well and uh, um, uh, did great things for, for Grace House. The, to move into our own facility was something that gives us some independence and uh, um, the ability to do other things than, than what we could do with uh, at Zion and so it's uh, it's worked well here. And I think in this part of the country where it is cold, um, you know, we're not going to have lots of people that are coming here as well and people tend to, I think in the winter time, open their homes a little bit more so that people who don't have a permanent home can stay there for a while but that gets old and so then you can do some couch hopping for a while but where do you go? Where is home? Um, and so Grace House has filled that need um, and, and um, started out, and I think it still is 10 beds, maybe it's a little bit more than that now, but um, filled a whole lot and serves a great purpose in the community. And I think the community is better because there is a homeless shelter for people to feel welcomed and a place to stay, an address to give an employer. Um, so it's, I'm just pleased with where Grace House is today and, and what it's done. As a community, the importance of a place like Grace House and the services that we provide, um, uh, it's, it's extremely important because if you don't have those services, then people wind up in our jails, they wind up in our emergency rooms, they wind up with inappropriate health care, um, they uh, make use of a lot of the very expensive services. We can provide service here at Grace House for a very small fraction of the cost of serving a person in the emergency room at the hospital or in an inpatient unit in a mental health center or in our county jail. And if you talk to um, law enforcement folks, you know, they have said in the past that our jails have become our biggest mental health centers in our community because we've uh, as a state, we've cut back on our services for folks um, in terms of um, in-house services for um, folks who are homeless. We have a lot of great services in the community, but not nearly enough. We need more. Um, we need more people and more services to assist people who are experiencing mental illness. Um, so that's a big issue in our community. And what happens is if we don't have a place like Grace House to welcome people as our guests for 30 days at a time, help them get back on their feet with, help them move into uh, uh, supportive or uh, more permanent housing, help them move into jobs in the community, et cetera, then they will stay homeless. You know, they, they, if you need those services to connect with the community and get your life back in order. Yeah, we try and uh, to uh, make it a, a house, not, not just cots on the floor or whatever and and so uh, last I think it was last summer we put in the play area we put in a garden area uh, and uh, because we do get uh, I don't think there's been a week in the last month that I've been here that we um, haven't had kids in the in the house I mean at some point maybe maybe short term uh, because they move on to family units in the community or something but uh, we usually have uh, some kids in 
at least once a week. And so that's a good opportunity. They, they, they need to get out and run <laughs> and, and get outside and, and do some things, so, uh, which is a good thing. I mean, sometimes uh, uh, some people would have, um, have, have an issue with that, but uh, that's what we do, and we need to, to help them feel comfortable and uh, f feel like it's their house uh, as well until they move on to something more permanent. What's great about Grace House is that people come here and they have time to sort of uh, take a breath. Uh, if you're out on the street, I can't imagine what it's like to be on the street by yourself, you know, without any resources. But people come to us, they've been sleeping out in the woods, they've been sleeping in a car, they've been couch hopping from friend to friend, etc., and they've lost those friends and so on. So. Um, they come to Grace House for our support so they can take a breath here They can get their life back in order a little bit and then the folks that we have at Grace House Who work with our guests help them connect with jobs connect with services in the community Maybe it's mental health case manager. Maybe it's a job counselor Maybe it's help with budgets, you know Just so that if they're eligible for certain kinds of veteran benefit or other services that they know how to um, to better utilize those funds so that they can maintain um, quality of life outside of institutions. So um, we're a 10 bed facility as you know. Um, it's not a lot of beds but we serve over 200 and say 50 or 60 persons a year and unfortunately we've had to turn a lot of people away through the years because we don't have the beds for them um, and so that's why we've teamed up with the churches um, and they've been we we couldn't do this without our volunteers without the churches without the financial support of the community which has been just tremendous through the years um, people have come forward they've recognized this homelessness as an issue and they've they've taken it upon themselves to do something about it so I'm so proud of not only the folks who are connected with Grace House, but the business community, our foundations, philanthropic partners, um, the state of Minnesota, and a great many other people who have become our partners, both in providing some funding, providing resources, providing um, uh, help in a whole variety of ways to keep Grace House going. Uh, it took uh, some money to make the purchase for buy this building and uh, remodel it to, to our needs. Uh, and the Blanda Foundation was very helpful in that, along, along with uh, a couple other organizations that um, helped fund it on a, just a short-term basis. Blanda Foundation funding and the loan that we received from them uh, was uh, a long-term loan. But uh, the board was of Grace House was adamant over the years that we would pay it off in three years. And that's what we did, and uh, that's what we're here celebrating today, is uh, paying that loan off in, in the first three years we're in the building. And, and I, I think the, to pay that off um, it means a few things to us that some of the other fundraising that we do and the, uh, the donors and the uh, contributions we get we can use for guest services more uh, or or to uh, help remodel our facility if needed and make better space or more space uh, as needed uh, to house other other guests that we uh, uh, have to turn away some we do turn away some folks over the year uh, w because of no vacancies there's other reasons we turn some folks away but uh, we do turn away a fair amount because we don't have room. So uh, if, if we can do something more to uh, make more availability and more room, that would be a plus and, and we could do that with some additional funding. And, and, and now that we've got this loan paid off, we can maybe utilize some of our, uh, that funding for that. So, so that's a, a good thing. And like I say, the funding, we'll, we're going to look at our building needs, um, whether we need to add on or remodel somehow to make more rooms. That'll be determined in the next few years. It's one of the success stories I think we've had in our community. And like the community cafe dealing with hunger, I wish we didn't have to have a Grace House. I wish that everyone had a safe, secure house to live in. I wish that they weren't hungry. I wish that they would be helped with their illnesses and so on. Um, it isn't happening completely yet. So while that's the case, Grace House is, is a wonderful shelter. If you look at our logo now, it's a nest. It's that, 
that safe, secure nest where people can come, sit and rest and reflect for a while and then move on with their, fly from the nest and get on with their lives. So that's, to my mind, what Grace House is all about. We really focus on the people that are intending to stay here, maybe are from here and, and want to stay here. I mean, if someone's saying they could get here and they say, we're headed to California, can you do something for us? Uh, we'll try to do something for them, but we're not going to probably uh, do as much as we would for someone that's going to stay here. We, we, we need to try to get them a job. We need to try to get them uh, a housing. Um, and, and that's w what our goal is, is to, this is a, a stopping spot for a period of time, whatever that is, and our limit is 30 days, but, um, uh, and then we can try to get them into other housings through other agencies in the community that have housing available. Uh, and then even, uh, we, we've talked some in the last month about what can we do for those folks after they're out of Grace House and they're staying locally, that can we keep connected to them in helping them grow their lives uh, as they, as they move forward in, in life and, and uh, through, the other, through a partnership with all the other agencies that are, are helping them too. It just says to me that this is an issue that, that any of us can be, you know, it can happen to any of us. And um, so we need organizations like Grace House to help us um, go through those bumps. And sometimes those are long lasting bumps because we're born with um, some physical or uh, mental issues or our circumstances with family are such that uh, we just need um, more ongoing help, you know, but that's what Grace House is for. We do have a, a great uh, partnership with uh, some of the local churches in overflow uh, shelter during the winter, uh, that if we do have no vacancies here, uh, we have uh, churches that will take them in uh, for the night and uh, then they come back here for uh, meals and uh, uh, getting connected to the resources that they uh, need help with. So uh, the churches have been instrumental in making that happen, number one, and uh, their volunteers uh, have been great hosts for some of our guests uh, in the last uh, two years. I think it's been two years that we've had that program going. A lot of that is um, has come about through the churches. Uh, I mean, all of the churches, Probably half a dozen of them have a, a very good, strong volunteer base here at, at Grace House, and, and that just a lot of that is just driven because of our relationship and our partnership with the churches. Uh, but we have other people that uh, that come in. Uh, last just a week ago, we had a training with seven new people that we had never worked with before, and they had never been a part of Grace House, and they came in the door and wanted to be trained as a volunteer. Now they may have been. Uh, uh, associated with one of the churches that we work with closely, but uh, I, I can't, I don't know that at this point, but, uh, but a lot of those uh, are people that uh, are, you know, maybe retired or just need another volunteer opportunity uh, to satisfy and fulfill their, their life too. I wish we didn't have to be here. I wish that we had other services and help for folks that people didn't wind up in this situation. But as long as we have dysfunction in areas and as long as we aren't providing those supports at the state and national level, and there's cuts, cutback in funding you know, in these areas, we are going to continue to have the issue of homelessness in our community. And it's an issue that all of us face and we need to, um, we need to do it together. Um, any one organization can't do it. Any one person can't do it, you know? It takes it takes all of us to be a part of it. Well, we do get uh, some good support from other agencies on, on uh, food and, and, and supplies like that too, but we're always, we always have people dropping stuff off and uh, this time of summertime, we get a lot of vegetables and stuff that, uh, you know, people plant more than they can utilize for themselves. So, uh, so and that's good because the, the guests like the, they like a good meal, they're not getting, uh, they're not getting uh, uh, fast food uh, here. They're getting uh, good uh, home cooked meals from, and the volunteers again are the people who do that. They, we have volunteers that come in for breakfast, uh, a shift at breakfast time. We have a shift at, at uh, in the evening for the evening meal. And then the volunteers also uh, have take a shift overnight. So they're, the, they're, they're our staff overnight uh, for most nights. So. 
Um, so they do, again, the volunteers do a whole lot of work for us. During the day, the, the staff takes care of any um, lunches or anything that are here. Most of it is working here, uh, uh, volunteering here at the house for meal planning and meal preparation. <clears throat> and uh, then overnight uh, help is where we, you know, we really uh, uh, need a couple people or a, a good uh, volunteer. Uh, but, you know, just as we look around the grounds here, uh, there's a lot of gardening and mowing and that type of thing uh, that is all done by volunteers. So that's a, that's a plus uh, for us because uh, we have a big grounds and uh, I, I think it looks uh, kept up and, and looks nice so, and that's done by volunteers. Um, uh, other ways, I, I think, you know, just talking about Grace House and, and reaching out to other groups. If we have a volunteer that's a, a great speaker or likes getting out and talking to people, we could work with them and, and uh, have them learn more about Grace House and then reach out to uh, groups or whatever too. So uh, if, if someone has an interest in volunteering, we, we'll find a spot for them, uh, either serving the house here and uh, what we do or even uh, serving the guests. I think we have some volunteers that come in and, and help serve, uh, uh, help work with the guests because they, they uh, need some guidance along the way or mentorship along the way and, and uh, uh, volunteers are a great resource for that too. So. Grace House is not, it's not just a shelter, it's so much more than that. It's a, it's a family setting where people have an opportunity to get their lives back in order and to move on. And um, we hear stories from folks that tell us that this is the first time they've ever had a home.